Hi folks and welcome to another Wii Paint Minis painting tutorial. This time round we'll be painting a Slave to Darkness Chaos Warrior in the theme of corn. Now this model has been kit bashed quite a bit. I, I changed the head using the Slaughter Priest head. I use a bit of green stuff to kind of make a neck. I also used a skull from the box of skulls to attach to the top of the axe head. They're really the only two bits I did to kitbash this model. I wanted to add something to the model to personify corn. And what more and what better than skull and a head of a slaughter priest with the mark of corn engraved in his helmet. I first started off by priming the model with Mechanica Standard Grey. It's just a nice even colour, it's not too light, it's not too dark. I then come in with some corn red and I base paint all of the armour. Don't have to be particularly careful with this at this stage. We can tidy up with other colours and neaten up as we go along, but just make sure you get some nice thin coats across the armour to give a nice smooth finish. Using dried bark, I now paint all the leather bits, so the boots, the gloves, the weird neck bracing that I created with green stuff in order to make like a faux neck on the Slaughter Priest helmet. And then a bad and black to paint the shield straps and the kind of undercloth garment thing that they wear under their armour. So in between the gaps of the, all the armour plates really, paint all that black. At this point I also base painted anything that was going to paint metallic black. I always find that painting over black was it takes a few more coats to go over with a metallic paint. I think it gives a better vibrant look in the end. Uh, it can be debatable I guess but that's the kind of feeling I get when I do it. I also decided that I wanted to paint the straps on the handle of the axe black as well. I wasn't going to be painting it in any particular colour at that point, I wasn't too sure so I just continued with the black. Enough waffling on now, let's move on to the next bit. This time we're going over the red armour with some known oil, we're going to go over the whole of the armour. We're not going to worry about dulling down the armour at all, that's kind of the effect we want to go with, so don't worry about wicking away any of the non all from the flat panels. Just slap it on. Oh, suit you, sir. Suit you, sir. Oh. And then come back in with corn red once again. Rather than going over the highest areas like you would normally would just kind of brushing it over, I stippled it on. So what I did, all the areas where the shade had settled, i.e. the recesses, I left as they were. I then stippled the corn red about two thirds from where that shade had settled up to the highest point quite liberally, just dotting over, so 
there was still some known oil showing through those little dots. Now I'd be lying if I said I hadn't seen this technique done before elsewhere on YouTube. Darren Latham did it on his Nurgle Blight Lord. It had an amazing effect. I loved the effect. Kind of give the beaten, mottled kind of look to the armor. And across all of these Chaos Champions that I've created and kit bashed and painting, I'll be doing the same effect because it, it does give a really cool effect. I then do this technique a second time using corn red, but at the highest points and about a third of the way down the armor panels, just to kind of give a gradient between the non oil in the recesses, the lightened up mottled effect, and then the even brighter mottled effect. That's right, you guessed it, the same effect again, but this time with Evil Sun Scarlet. So a lighter red, just on the pronounced areas where the light is hitting the most. So as you can see, I'm doing there on top of the knee pad and across the thigh. Anywhere where the light is hitting or would strike is where you want to put this Evil Sun Scarlet. Once the mottled effect has been complete, I then use Cadian Flesh Tone as a way to edge highlight all the panel work. It's a bit of an unusual colour, but I think it gives a really nice tone to the armour rather than using something like Fire Dragon Bright or any kind of orange that would desaturate that red. Give it a go. Why not? Something different. I now paint the fur pelt with Rhinox Hide. I just kind of go over it quite liberally. Simple, base the colour in. Be careful with the red that you've already done. Other than that, the rest of it's fine. If you get some black, you can just tidy it up. In a moment of absolute madness, I switched back to the boots for some reason. I don't know why I didn't continue with the fur, but I went back to the boots to kind of... I don't know why, anyway. Anyway, I must point out the fact that when I washed the armour with nylon oil, I also washed all of the leather with nylon oil as well. Yeah, really bad of me not to point that out, but that's what I did do. That's why I'm going over it with dried bark once more. You know, to bring the highlights back up. To get that worn leather look that I like to get when I paint my leather, I used Bane Blade Brown and kind of stippled it on. Got it relatively thin, not too thin that it was watery and run off your brush, but thin enough so you could just dab it on. It would not leave this bright splodge of paint on the model, but would be enough of a subtle difference that you could notice it was. And I went around all the edges, all the folds, creases, dotting this around. Much like we did on the previous step, we're going to get some Carrick Stone and keep the same consistency of the paint like you did before, so not too watery but not too thick. 
and we're going to add a very fine stipple to the highlights so things like the knuckles and the extreme folds extreme folds extreme folds in the leather why is it extreme it's not extreme you know what i mean the areas where the folds are more prominent that's what i'm trying to say doofus Slap on some straight out of the pot Agrax Earthshade. I'm an absolute animal. I rarely, rarely use Lamium Medium to thin down my shades. It's probably a bit bad, I know, but slap it on. We can sort it out later, not a problem. The reason we're doing this on this leather is to bring those highlights and the standard leather color that we've got on there, the dried bark, together. That way it brings the colors together and it looks like more of a complete object, like it's an actual real object rather than several layers of colours. Now oh, look, we're mysteriously back at the fur again. This time, Hopefully we'll finish it. So we're going to go over it with an overbrush, a technique that I learned again from Darren Latham. Not a dry brush, an overbrush. You just fill the brush up with steel lidge and drab and you brush over the area gently. That brush was too small, I had to change to a bigger one. Basically what it does is it leaves the darker colour in the recess still, but also it gives a more solid, smooth colour to the to the main surface. Using some Carrick Stone again, I'm going to do the same sort of technique, but concentrate the overbrush in the middle third of the pelt rather than all the way around the outside. Just take your time to do it, same consistency as before, so not too thick, not too thin. Enough to cover over, but not enough to run into the recesses to ruin all of the dark underlay colour that you already have there. Hello, Agrax, my old friend. I'm sorry, I won't do that again. That was ridiculous. I use Agrax Earthshade again to shade all over the fur pelt, making sure we're going to really define those individual strands of fur and really get into the recesses. Can't believe I just sung on YouTube. Now for a bit of dry brushing. We're going to use Carrick Stone once more. We're going to get a bit on our dry brush. I've got a medium dry brush here. I don't have a small dry brush, so I'm going to have to use this one. So be very careful if you don't have the correct tools like I don't sometimes. Just be careful. Put the paint on the brush, get a bit of toilet roll like I've gone, unless it's very rare to find that at the moment. Use something else like a towel or something. And then brush off the excess paint onto the onto the material you're using all you want to see on there is kind of the smallest amount of paint that's when you know it's ready to brush on then we're going to brush that on across the whole pelt just to bring that carrack stone back up to reduce the darkness 
that we've just created from the Agrax Earthshade. And it's the return of the leather, the black leather to be precise. What we're going to do here is get some Administratum Grey and use it to kind of edge highlight the black straps that he uses to hold the shield and the areas of the under garment thing. Still using a Ministrat and Grey, what I do is paint some lines coming from about a third of the way from the centre of the straps to the edge. Kind of give the impression of not cracked leather but kind of dinked leather. Leather that's been held quite a lot and things like that. So it almost gives the worn leather look or the battered leather look like I did on the boots and the gloves. But a lot less worn, a lot more uniform as if like, because that's the only particular way you're going to hold that shield. Now onto the cloak. I'm using Incubi Darkness here. And all I'm doing with it is watering it down quite heavily. And then applying it to the high areas of the cloak. So... Where it kind of dips down, that's we're leaving that black, like the blackest, darkest, darkest. But as we get further up and where the light's hidden it, so as you can see, it's quite a big surface area. That's where we're painting the Inca by Darkness. We're going to do it in several layers. That way, we can build up a brightness as we go from the lower parts of the cloak to the higher parts of the cloak. I'm just using the Citadel Medium Base Brush for this. I believe it was the one I got in the Mortal Realms magazine, which they're not great. It almost looks uh, synthetic to a degree, but it seems to have done quite well considering it has flayed a little bit at the end, but you can't win with everything really, can you? Once I'm happy with the gradients of the Incubi Darkness, I then move on to Cabalite Green. And what we're going to do here is very similar to what we did before, however, we're just going to hit the highest points of the cloak. That way, what we're doing is we're determining where the light is hitting the most on the cloak, rather than kind of giving a gradient down into the darker recesses. So basically, the whole point is, is light where the Cabalite Green is, darker into the Incubi Darkness, and then darker still into the Abaddon Black. Again, I water the paint down quite heavily and I just go over as much as I can or as much as I want to until I'm happy with the end result. And finally on the cloak, I use Sybarite Green to edge highlight. So I'm going around all the edges, all the tattered bits, all the kind of straight bits, all the curved bits, where they are pronounced. I go over a few times, I kind of take my time, just to make sure I'm getting the bits where I want to get. I go around the holes in the cloak, things like that. I actually do it as well on top of some of the folds that are more pronounced. You don't have to do that, but I did that. I think it looks okay. I probably wouldn't do it next time. What you may notice from me painting this cloak is I've not used a wash once on it. I learnt this technique on YouTube as well from someone called Rob, from a channel called Rob Paints Models. I would go and check his stuff out. He is a really, really cool painter. The colour I got for this cloak is exactly the same. The technique is exactly the same, so it would be remiss of me not to include him in to this video. Now onto the skull on top of his axe and the horns on his helmet. I'm going to start this by basing it with Zandri dust. 
I always water my Xandria dust down quite heavily as I find that it dries up and clumps quite easy. So I would recommend something like two parts water to one part paint. That way what you'll do is it might take a few covers or a few coats to cover whatever you're painting. However, it gives a smoother finish in the end and therefore will look better. In my opinion, that is. Oh look, it's Agrox Earthshade again. I honestly use this quite a lot. It's actually a really good shade. I'm sure a lot of you folks do the same, unless you've dropped it or spilt it or whatever. But it's a really good shade to use when defining bone, in my opinion. I think it gives a really nice, not bleached look, because obviously that means it's been out in the sun for a long period of time or something like that, but a fresh look, I find. So it's one that's just been ripped from the carcass of his enemy and stuck onto the axe. Back in once again with Zandri Dust, this time thin down again. And we're going to draw the paint from not quite where the recesses are, but a bit towards the recesses. And from them to the edge or the outermost part where the edges are of the skull. That way what we'll do is we'll create a gradient from the dark area and the recesses all the way up to the light area on the edge of the skull. Coming in with some new shabted bone to define the edges further. We're going to add it onto the most pronounced areas of the skull, so around the jaw bone, around the cheeks, around the eye sockets, on the teeth, things like that. The areas where the light is hitting the most, not completely covering the Xandri dust that we already had on there, but enough to give a differentiation between the two. And then a final edge highlight on the most pronounced areas using Scream and Skull. I did this technique also on the horns. Although later on I do add a little bit of black paint watered down quite heavily along the tips of the horns just to define them and make them stand out from the fur. However, I didn't record it because I'm a noob. Now onto yours and my favourite bit, the metallics. I need your folks help on this one. I really need some recommendations of other branded metallics. I've heard Vallejo of good. I only have Citadel branded ones. And whilst the colours are nice, the coverage is awful and I have to really water stuff down for it to run on smoothly. So if you have any recommendation for metallic paints, please let me know in the comments below. I'd really appreciate it. So yeah, basically what I do here is I water down Balthazar gold and I start to paint it over all the areas in which I wish to be gold. I'm going for a more brassy gold than a royal gold, so Balthazar gold is really good for this effect. God 
damn it, Agrox Earthshade. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. I used Agrox Earthshade to wash this, if you hadn't guessed already. Again, straight out of the pot, no worrying about watering it down, all over, get that nice, dulled, gold look. I switched to the axe head here and for this I used lead belcher. Plain and simple, lead belcher is great for this sort of stuff. Again I'm not too keen on the Citadel Metallics but it does the job. I just slap it all over, thin down on the axe head. I also use it to highlight the rivets on the armour plates and also where he's holding the shield. The straps are held on by what looks to be rivets as well. So I paint those silver while I have the paint out. Switching to nylon oil, I slap it all over the axe head and any of the other areas in which I painted silver, apart from the rivets. The thing is, I don't want to get black on the red, so I avoid it. Plus, it kind of looks like it's been chipped and nicked and banged and dinged on all other describing words. Switching back to the metallics on the armour because I'm an indecisive fool. I use Gehenna's gold to highlight over the darkened metal that we created using Balthazar gold and nylon oil. It just gives a nice punchy highlight to it but still maintains that brassy look. Once the gold's been done, I switch back to the axe head. And what I do here is I get a sponge and I rip a piece off so it gives a nice rough edge. I then dip that in some Jacara orange, dab off the excess, and then start to stipple ever so slightly the Jacara orange onto the axe head to give the illusion of rust. I do the same technique, but this time with scrag brown on the sponge. I just use a small amount of it, and don't use it to cover up the chakera orange that you already had, but to add on top of it. We're on the home stretch, folks, and we're going to see how many more times we can say the word sponge before someone makes a comment saying I'm saying it all wrong. <laughs> sponge. This time we're going to use Rhinox Hide, and we're going to dab it on even more, covering up that bit of that scrag brown, covering up a bit of that jacara orange, just to give a variation in rust colour. And finally, it's back with the lead belcher on the sponge. It's French, don't you? Know? Just, just go with it. Okay. And we're going to dab that all over the rust areas in which we created. So what that's going to give the effect of is pitted rust. So the rust in various places, but not completely solid across the axe head. It's just going to give like a effect where the water's collected in certain areas and it's rusted over a period of time. We then use lead belcher just to tidy up some of the edges to bring back the sharpness of the blade so it's not completely dulled down by that rust. 
All there is left for us to do now is to base the model in whatever scheme you want to. I did a desert base and we are finished. A huge thank you to everybody who watched this video. For those of you who watched all the way to the end, that is awesome. For those of you who watched just at the beginning, that is awesome. I just appreciate the fact that you've taken the time to at least try. I really enjoy making these videos, I really enjoy painting, and I hope it comes across. If you do like what you see and you enjoy my content, please give this video a like and why not throw in a subscribe as well. It's totally free to do, but as I always say, you never have to.